And one of the first conversations, uh, he said, I want to be the best player in the world. He's a goal machine who always wants to score more goals. Cristiano has a special finishing ability. I don't know if it's magical or divine, but it is unique. Every time he goes on the pitch, he's dangerous. He's going he's gonna to do something. At that level, day after day, scoring so many goals, wow, I've got to take my hat off to him. among the all-time greats. That's not even in doubt. In 2009, Real Madrid entered into the transfer market and broke the world record again. 94 million euros were paid to Manchester United to sign a 24-year-old Portuguese star, the holder of the Ballon d'Or, FIFA's World Player of the Year. A man with the talent and dedication to become the ultimate modern-day footballer. Of all the great players I've had the pleasure to work with, the most determined, most meticulous, most focused, day after day, in his work, the most committed to attain certain goals is without doubt Cristiano. I think I, I am an ambition a person, ambition player. And, um, you know, and this is my life, this is what I love to do. Nearly 600 miles from the Portuguese mainland lies the island of Madeira, the birthplace in 1985 of a world football phenomenon. Obsessed with the game from a young age, the raw talent of Cristiano Ronaldo quickly attracted the attention of the island's best teams. It was not long before Portugal's top clubs came calling. At age just 11, he signed for Sporting Lisbon. I was still in Portugal when the news regarding Cristiano began to filter out. And when I went to Manchester United, he continued his progress through the various academies at Sporting Lisbon. In my opinion, Ronaldo always wanted to be a professional footballer. But in order to be a world-class player, you also need to be a super athlete. His period at the Lisbon Academy was a defining one. He became the first player in Sporting's history to go from the under-16 class all the way to the first team in the same season. The right winger then scored twice on his debut. He has a special gift to be in the right place at the right time and to use his ability to make the right decision. That is not something all of the players in the world can do. Even among the best, only some have that special gift of being able to anticipate things which most players cannot even see. In 2003, Sporting Lisbon played Manchester United in a pre-season friendly. The match would change Ronaldo's career forever. We've seen this, this lad get the ball and just quick feet and beat Shazy and get a cross or get a shot off and you sort of suddenly stood, you know, sat up on the bench and woke up and go, whoa, what have we just seen there? And then you saw half giggling at the players who were on the pitch because you're on the bench and you don't have to face this lad who's just terrorising the whole team. Alex, uh, Sabia. Sir Alex knew about his qualities. He knew what I thought about the player. And he also knew that I was absolutely determined and would do anything to sign Cristiano Ronaldo for Manchester United. He also knew that if he wasted time, 
Real Madrid would go to Lisbon and take Cristiano Ronaldo to Spain with them. We had an agreement with them anyway. It was only <coughs> accelerated that night because of his performance against us, which was ex ex really exciting. Uh, but we had a, 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 an agreement with Sporting Lisbon. They would join us the next year. So we did our work. We, we, we spoke to the boy after the game. We spoke to his mother, spoke to his agent. We got him a private plane the next morning into Manchester and got the deal done before people could blink. And that's when you've, when you've got a decision to, make it, to make, make it quickly. I'll never forget, we got on the coach ready for home. I think we'd been away like three weeks, ready to go home. And slowly towards the back of the coach, it got a whisper that we just signed him 30 million. We just signed this lad, Ronaldo, the, the winger. And there was like a buzz of excitement. So we all trying to find out a little bit more about him. We'd obviously just seen 90 minutes of him or whatever he played and he stood out and um, yeah, it was, it was a moment that you'll, you'll never forget that you first seen him because he was such a, such a talent. In Manchester, Ronaldo faced the challenge of a new country, a new way of life and a new style of football. The young Portuguese was eased in gently by manager Sir Alex Ferguson. But watching at close quarters, it was obvious the Scot had signed a player of immense natural ability. First impressions of Ronaldo were that he was incredible ability, quick, uh, wanted to take the ball and beat men all the time. There was a buzz of excitement as soon as he stepped off the bench for his debut at Old Trafford against Bolton Wanderers. His first goal for Manchester United heralded a taste of things to come. Ronaldo scored eight times during that first season, including the opener in the FA Cup final, as United defeated Millwall 3-0 in Cardiff. Still only a teenager, Ronaldo had established himself as the club's new number seven, following such icons as George Best, Eric Cantona, and David Beckham. He has a starting level that is not comparable to anything else. His genetics, his talent, in the specific components regarding football, he possesses a harmony that is exceptional, which makes him a unique player. Ronaldo was not yet the finished article, but his desire to improve was obvious to all. Frustrating at times, you know, decision making, uh, when to shoot, when to pass, when to dribble, when not to dribble. Now it took him a few years to get used to that. I came to United and you came, you came to work with him and you see how much energy and, and effort he, he puts in, uh, in himself to, to get better. But a lot of talents think talent is enough, but talent is only a start. It, it starts after that, it's hard work dedication and living as a professional. It's like a challenge for me. I want to do it uh, best as I can. And, um, you know, when you do something with the passion, you know, it's more, it's more easily. Ronaldo's target was simple, to become the best in the world. But he couldn't do it alone. Everybody saw the, the raw talent and the, and the pace. achieved a lot uh, for himself, but of course you need, along the way you need people to help. And uh, I think Carlos Queiroz was, uh, was important for him uh, as, as a Portuguese uh, coach at, at Man United. He always wanted to me to be in goal. And obviously made a little game of it, of course, and then uh, with his free kicks. And uh, Ronnie, uh, you always never, you never score anyway. Ah, oh, come on, come on, go and go. I'm going to score now. And uh, you, you always could, on, on a nice, playful way, you could 
um, yeah, motivate him uh, to, to get the best out of him. He started to adjust his game and, uh, and, and be really important also in the goal scoring area. He, uh, as, as a winger he scored, yeah, I don't know, 38 goals or something. And that was an unbelievable amount. It's incredibly difficult to stop somebody like that because the counter-attacking ability of him, the speed, the power, is it absolutely just, it's phenomenal. You mark him on the ground, he'll do you in the air. If you stop him going on his left, he'll go on his right. If you stop him shooting from distance, he'll dribble into the box. If you think that he, your left back's doing well against him, he'll play against your centre back. If your centre back does well against him, he'll play against your right back. He really will pose every single problem that you need to pose in a game. Ronaldo was becoming the Premier League's best player, but not everyone was won over. Despite his success in England, he faced constant criticism over his failure to convert his ability into greatness for Portugal's national team. When the fans see Cristiano playing for Real Madrid, they expect to see the same great feats in the national team as they saw a week before. And that is not always possible. When it is impossible, the fans of the national side normally react badly. But it's not because they don't like or admire a certain player. It's just frustration to see the national team not winning. Who is the people to judge something that they don't know? Of course, this is it's something that I don't like. But I have to live with that. I cannot change. I cannot change my personality. I can, cannot change my character. I cannot change my education. You know, I respect the people, but of course I don't agree because the real people who know me, he knows who is Cristiano, you understand? In 2008, Carlos Queiroz appointed him captain of the national side. He quickly adapted to role of leader. Unremarkable performances, however, continued to plague Ronaldo and the national team. But after a shaky start at Euro 2012, he came alive. Two goals helped dispatch the Dutch in the final group match. Some of the critics had been answered. Portugal do not play a very attractive brand of football. We have a pragmatic team, but when things are going well and Ronaldo is inspired, we sometimes get very big results and something a lot more attractive than we are normally accustomed to. His winning header against the Czech Republic in the quarter-final was greeted warmly in Portugal. There was the sense that Ronaldo's overall performance and dedication was finally reflecting his status in world football. At the end of the day, the marriage, kindness and love that exists between the Portuguese fans and Cristiano is for life. It is impossible to end it. That love exists. Perhaps at times there are some small problems, but that love is eternal. At club level, there remained a mutual adoration between Ronaldo and his supporters. Manchester United's title success in 2007 was unquestionably a team effort. But one man took the starring role in almost every performance. One of the first conversations, uh, he said, I want to be the best player in the world. And a lot of people say that, uh, but he, he puts work to it, he, he puts dedication, he, uh, the time and effort. Ronaldo's commitment to the cause that season helped secure his first Premier League title, the club's 16th. Tangible evidence for this most driven of young men that he was heading in the right direction. The following season, he scored a staggering 42 goals in all competitions, many of them spectacular, especially his free kicks. Puts the ball on a certain spot on the ground, Not even hitting the ball, of course, with a lot of pace, of course, but there's, not, there's no swing with his leg. It seems to accelerate all the time. To 
be fair, he scored a few against me also in training. Uh, I give him that, but uh, it was always a joy to work with him. It was during the following season when Ronaldo was at his very best in a United shirt. He dovetailed beautifully with Wayne Rooney, forming one of the most prolific strike partnerships in world football. Season after season, he'd become more and more influential, where it comes to the point where he would play every single game. He would contribute nearly every single um, moment that he was on the pitch, whether it be a goal, whether it be a pass. By May 2008, Ronaldo had inspired United to domestic and European glory. His penalty contributing to a victory that saw the club crowned English champions for the 17th time. What he did at Manchester United in his last two or three seasons, I mean, you're talking about a phenomenon there. Ronaldo found the net seven times in the Champions League as he helped Manchester United reach the final in Moscow. Against Chelsea, not surprisingly, Ronaldo quickly made his mark. He scored a fantastic goal. And I think Michael Jordan would have been uh, jealous on the, on the height that he, that he got on the cross and uh, the way he headed the ball uh, past Peter Cech. Chelsea fought back. Frank Lampard's equaliser, forcing a penalty shootout. Ronaldo stepped up third for United and missed. Disappointed when he uh, when he missed that penalty. Yeah, that, uh, that's that's always problems. Uh, one of his regrets also, because uh, you want to be uh, the big games. You want you want to shine. I'm very happy for for myself and for the team and uh, and for him. Uh, he, uh, he he scored so many goals for us that I was able to uh, to help him out and and and, and make that save and uh, and that we won the the, the Champions League uh, the first time uh, with each other. The triumph capped a remarkable season. Ronaldo was the Champions League top scorer with eight goals, the Premier League's top scorer with 31. He became the first United player since George Best in 1968 to win the Ballon d'Or, and was also voted FIFA World Player of the Year. It was the ultimate personal achievement. Ronaldo had reached his goal to be the best of the best. I'm 100% among the all-time greats. 100%. That's not even in doubt. You know, if you're going to put Zidane's Figo's, the Brazilian Ronaldo, then that, you know, 100% that Ronaldo would be in that bracket. He's, he's not even in question. Also in that bracket, however, is Barcelona's Lionel Messi who was voted the world's greatest player in each of the four following seasons. Ronaldo could only look on as their rivalry intensified, at least in the media. I don't work in the press, I don't work in television. I cannot control that. Well, they love it to do that, what I'm going to do. I have to do my work, I have to train, I have to, to, to score, I have to, to play, try to help my, my team all the time. I'm not afraid of him because, you know, we don't share the same dressing room. We not go out for dinner, you know, but I respect him like a professional. His final season at Old Trafford saw him complete a hat-trick of league titles. His stunning 40-yard strike against Porto was instrumental in helping United to a second consecutive European Cup final. However, defeat to Barcelona and Messi proved to be his farewell appearance for the Manchester Giants. Rumours of a record-breaking move were about to become a reality. I think Real Madrid was the dream for him. Obviously, he was he loved playing at United, and um, you know, still loves the place now. But I think deep down, his dream was to play for Real Madrid. So he'd, um, I think, come to an arrangement with the manager or the club where he would do another season and, and then maybe go then. Despite being idolised at Manchester United, Cristiano Ronaldo was desperate to achieve more. He saw Real Madrid as the ultimate platform. And when the economics were agreed, he flew to Spain to complete a world record move of 94 million euros. I think that the presentation of Ronaldo was the most spectacular transfer event that Real Madrid has ever seen. And he was ready for the challenge. He adapted very quickly to the environment, 
and to the tactics of Pellegrini. Despite missing six weeks through injury, Ronaldo scored 33 goals in 35 appearances. He was developing into the complete footballer. I think I'm, I'm, I'm play good. I try all the time my best. Um, you know, and I'm, I want to carry on like that. When you've got a player like that in your team who knows where to go, he knows where to move, and I could play the ball to him. He made life so easy for me. Even on a bad day, when the team's not playing well, if you give him five good passes, he'll do well with four of them. He'll either score or give an assist. So you always have to look out for a big player like him, because he can always change the game. I think our statistics together showed how many assists I provided for him and how many goals he scored. I'm still so pleased I was able to play alongside him. We have to be fit, we have to be all the time ready, you know, for the, the big circumstances. So, you know, I'm always ready for, for every game, for every competition, so it's good. The following year, trophies proved difficult to come by, but not goals. Ronaldo set new benchmarks for individual achievement. 53 goals in all competitions highlighted his incredible talent. His decisive header against Barcelona in the final of the Copa del Rey brought his first trophy in Spain. 40 goals in La Liga won him the golden boot. And he became the first player to win the award in two different leagues. In 2012, Madrid finally won La Liga. At the heart of the success was the irrepressible Ronaldo. 100 league goals in just three seasons. He ended the year with 60 in all competitions. I'd like to congratulate him, because it's not easy to stay at that level for so long. Unremitting, unplayable, unstoppable. Cristiano Ronaldo has been described as all three. His combination of talent and dedication catapulted him to the highest level. And in January 2014, he was awarded the Ballon d'Or once again, he was recognised as the world's greatest player. I'd say he's a driven, committed um, football player who has an absolutely incredible, outstanding ability and physique. At that level, day after day, scoring so many goals, wow, I take my hat off to him. It's a lot of work. He works very hard. He pushes his own limits, and you can see the results. From coming to United as a raw talent, he left United as, as the complete modern-day footballer. He, he delivers, and as long as you deliver, you're, you're, yeah, you're good, and you're, um, you're praised, especially in those, those countries like Spain and Italy. Uh, and you don't have to play well, but if you score, then, you're, yeah, yeah, then you have a great game. But I think Ronnie also that brings so much more to the team than only the goals. When he blends his technical quality with his mental strength and determination, he has a combination that makes him a unique player. This is so obvious. That this is one of the greatest players. This is so obvious, it's staring us in the, in the face. Well, maybe sometimes in the pitch, I show something that the people don't like. I'm, I don't smile a lot in the pitch because I, I try to be focused. In a life, we have always the people who judge us. But I think sometimes this is not fair, but you know, we have to live with that. <laughs>